If you can remember back in time, probably like, I don't know, six, seven months ago, the plan was that we were getting the lofts habitable, like so obviously we've created this loft conversion that it was just an attic and then a roof. And then we made the pod loft extension and then the main loft conversion, which is basically ripping the roof off of both of them. Make the two loft conversions habitable. So then I could move up from this room that I was living in, which did not look like this back then. Move up there, then gut the ground floor, the basement fully, get on with the kitchen. Now you might be wondering, why did you not just move out and rent somewhere? Well, my mortgage is pretty disgusting. Renting in London is pretty disgusting in terms of like the cost. So doing both of those two things at the same time, yeah, I'd rather sleep in a building site than, than do that. And so that's what I did. And it's been horrible. Before I run up there, I do just wanna show you how ridiculous having a split level house is because it just feels like you're walking on and on. If you started in the basement, so you've got one flight of stairs here. I'm gonna get really out of breath doing this. So you run up one flight of stairs, more stairs, more stairs. Okay, I'm already feeling myself getting out of breath. But it keeps you fit, that's good. And then everything from this point on, we created. And the stairs just go on and on and on. And it's kind of deceptive, this house. Because when you look from the front, the house doesn't look that big. I mean, it's bigger than a normal terrace house, that's for sure. And it's actually like a meter and a half wider than most normal houses in London, which when that's then applied to then 60 odd foot, the front of the house to the back, that adds square meter. And then you add that to every single floor, including the loft conversions. Yeah, you're adding a lot of square meter. And that's why loft conversions, when you've done your research and if the numbers make sense, they can be really, really good for adding value to your property. And in a future video, Video, I'm going to explain to you why adding value to your property can lead to some pretty pretty insane situations and a lot of them aren't that commonly known. Now as you can see I've got a, like a dangly light thing. You can go up to thousands and thousands of pounds buying these lights and to be honest with you this is one of the cheapest ones you can buy and it does the job. It does what I want it to do. Yeah you can get way nicer ones but just for a light that I never have it on because this skylight, remember I always go on about skylights, lets in so much natural light that you just don't need it. So if you're doing a loft conversion, definitely, definitely skylight above the staircase because that light then falls down to this hallway down here. And otherwise it was so dark in that hallway before the loft conversion, but this just opened it up. And the great thing about a loft conversion, it's the existing first floor footprint again. So I'd say this loft conversion added probably 50 odd square meters to the house, I'd say. There's no need for this, this little ledge. We just made a stud wall because we thought it would look nice and then you can put stuff on it. Yeah, really happy with how this hallway turned out and like working out the landing sizes and everything. A top tip when you've got this, which I think is called like a stringer of a staircase, you can just get these little edging bits and it can kind of make it end up looking like skirting. And it's just like a little bit of detail that adds quite a lot. You'll see it in any builder's merchant. You just nail them on. It just makes it look like skirting and then it runs into the existing skirt. And yeah, I think it really adds a lot. So this is double bedroom number four. Super, super happy with how this turned out. So this is a pod room loft conversion. So as you can see here, we are on top of that room below, built basically on the perimeter wall. Well, a little bit set in. And yeah, most people, windows are a bit dirty, but you can see they only go halfway on loft conversions. That's because they do something silly with planning permission and they use their permitted development too soon and then it hinders them in the future and they can't get the full pod loft conversion. Whereas as you can see with ours, we've gone the, the full extension and we have the biggest house on the road. We also have managed to fit in quite a big sized ensuite. So I'm super happy with how this turned out. It's basically the same ensuite as the room below except for it's a little bit bigger. So it's a lot bigger shower tray. And then we've got this really cool shower screen. So how it works is when you've got the rain head shower thing going, you then angle it like that. And then that stops the water from splashing out. And then you've also got enough room to get in when it's just like that, or you open it out. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I think it looks really smart, that's for sure. You don't ever really see that sort of shower screen. Got all the controls there, which you can just lean in, turn on without getting drenched. And then of course, We've got our little recess lighting, which we make ourselves the whole thing. It's pretty much exactly the same layout as downstairs. You've got the same composite marble. Spent a while cutting that, fitting all of this. Tons of work, and then obviously you've got the same mirror. The plus side with adding tons of square meter to your house is you add quite a lot of value. The annoying thing is, is you've got to buy like four of those mirrors. The whole kitchen's also got underfloor heating, I might have forgotten to say that. But yeah, I'll put some photos on the screen now of what this 
used to look like. And then you can kind of see going from then to now. A ton of work, but it's definitely, definitely been worth it. It's a very happy sized double bedroom. Because it is a pod, you're built on the inside skin of the wall. So it's a little bit smaller than the bedroom downstairs. And then we also did add a little bit of a bigger bathroom, which in hindsight, we could have just gone for a smaller ensuite which would probably stop it about, I'd say, there. Now onto the master bedroom, which, yeah, is my favorite room in the house. Obviously you've got the, the skylight. That's what it looks like from up here. Got the dangly lights. And then that's what it looks like looking down. This is the master bedroom where my brother and his girlfriend live at the moment. She's from Essex, clearly. So again, underfloor heating, a huge double bed. I don't know what the big one's called. But yeah, it's got that. And it's also got a really high ceiling height. And that's something that we spent so much time thinking about with the steels. And we raised the ridge just so we can have this. Like, I mean, there's that much distance above full height doors. I love this room so much. This was the first bathroom that we finished. The amount of thought we put into, because we were like, oh, because we're creating everything ourselves. We were like, yeah, let's just do the stud work. So it steps back and then let's step it back enough so that that is completely tucked away. So all you see when you walk in is just the toilet. So it makes a better feeling of space. Let's put an LED strip along the entire back of the bathroom. So it creates this kind of glowing effect because otherwise you've got the massive velux there and then you've got the massive veluxes there. That's gonna be super dark down there. So if we just put that strip, it's gonna create like a really nice glowing effect. And then the bath, amount of conversations we had with the bath because the head height, I mean, you can stand up bloody full head height right up to pretty much into the bath. But then obviously when you get into a bath, you crouch. Now we were thinking, oh, well, we've got enough space that we can pull it out a lot further and then it's no problem getting into it. But then it's a loft ensuite that is almost as big as the family bathroom. It's not very often that you're gonna end up using the bath. Is it worth compromising a bit of the space in the room or shall we just push it right to the corner? And we decided we'd just push it back a bit and you can get in and out fine. It might look a bit weird on camera, but trust me, it's not, it works brilliant. And then obviously you've got the out of the floor tap, which has water coming out of it, obviously. But yeah, stuff like that is satisfying because when you've created everything yourself, it's a bit mad. Like <laughs> stuff like that is normal when you buy a house, but when you've done it yourself, you're like, oh, it actually works. Like, oh, this actually looks like this. Like the amount of time cutting that tile to curve it. And then it's again, we did our recess light. It's a very similar shower size to the one that is down in the first bedroom. Unbelievably happy with it. And then obviously that's when it's got all the spotlights on. Yeah, really nice place to be. If you are doing a loft conversion, something to think about, if you stand up to go to the toilet, quite often what you'll see people do is they put the velux just over it. So if you do have restricted head height, you can at least stand up. We just did it because basically this is the area you're gonna be walking around. And when you put a, a velux in, you then gain that head height. I think that is a key element into why this room feels so big is because you can be walking full head height right up to here. You got this Juliet balcony. If you're just joining the channel, my brother and me have done all of this, except for when we got some chippies and a roofer in. Go watch the, the cowboy builder video on that because yeah, that's looking back, amazing. I'm very happy with how that turned out, but it was not enjoyable. But this process now where I'm at the end of the project, house is done. I've spent the amount I've spent. I'd do it all a million times over.